Jay Crace is going to come pray for us at this time. We're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. May the Lord bless you tonight. Let's pray together. Brother Larry, you lead us, please. Let's pray. Lord, it's all about you. Mm-hmm. Your, your word that we thank you that we do have grace to sing about and, and how we enjoy singing about you. Father, we thank you for this good crowd of people. We ask you, Lord, that you would bless us tonight, that you would encourage our spirits. Lord, we pray for the preachers who are going to preach tonight. We pray for the, the Perrys who are coming to sing for us, Lord, that you would uh, that you'd use them in a mighty way for us. Father, use your word. For the people who couldn't be here tonight, Father, we pray that you'd be with them, that you'd comfort them, and that you'd heal those that are sick. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Larry. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand to your feet, if you would, please. The ladies are going to play for us. The choir's coming down. What we'd like for you to do is turn around and shake hands with those around you. Fellowship one with the other at this time, if you would, please. Bless you, Brother Hart. Thank you for coming to church tonight. I appreciate you coming. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. To someone said it, and I said, that makes me glad. What we're going to do tonight, I want you to know a little bit ahead of time. We're going to have an offering, preaching, singing, preaching, singing, preaching, singing <laughs> baptism and singing Amen. Do it, we're going to do it all Amen. And we're going to do it all till we get done Amen. now our, our, we're not here to exhaust you we're here to encourage you and if you'll quit thinking about getting out and think about getting in right. Amen. you'll be alright okay and just enjoy it. It's a good thing. This is a day which the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to take a regular Sunday night offering. After the services are closed, we'll ask you to give an offering to the Perrys as you leave. Please be prepared to do that. This is just our regular Sunday night offering. And after we do that, our children always give a mission offering on Sunday nights. And we'll let our children do that. But they'll not be saying their scripture verses tonight. But we do have a program for the children tonight. We'll take care of that and tell you when they can be dismissed downstairs uh, after the Perry sing a little bit. We'll hear him let the Perry sing a little bit so they can hear them before we dismiss our children to their classes. All right, if our men will come tonight, we'll take the offering. All right. Brother Dwayne, why don't you come and ask God to bless the offering tonight? Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this day that you've given us. And we ask you to bless the services tonight, bless the offering that's given, that be uplifting and upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless this singing, a special singing. 
bless the word of God as it's presented tonight. May it encourage our hearts to, to encourage other people during the week. Help us too, Lord. Bless everything in this everything that goes on in this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The offering that the children will give tonight is to have a needy family. We have a needy church family. So whatever you give tonight, children, that's what we'll do to them. If you'll come and place it here in the jar here at the front. You can place it here tonight. Children, if you'll come and do that now, please. If you have some money you'd like to let them come and take from you <laughs> to give, just raise it up. They'll come and get it. Oh, wait a minute. I want you to just, I'm gonna stay here with me, okay? some more here too I like long offerings amen <laughs> all right you can just if you want to yes Charlotte Gaylor's having her first treatment to be prepared for a kidney transplant this coming Friday. The transplant will take place on the 16th. Our church and other people have taken up donations because the insurance will not pay for the treatments you have to have. And the children on our bus route from Harriman have been raising money to give to Charlotte and to Rick. And these boys in the bus routes have raised $55.07. And they were wanting to give that to them tonight. Thank you, Father. I think that's wonderful, don't you? I'm going to give it to Brother Price. I think there's $155, I think I said, in here. And, uh, 55, he won't owe 100 when he gives it to him. What's next? Okay, would you stand with us one more time? Every service, we pray for our military here. We're going to ask God to help them, to shield them, protect them, watch over them. 
All right, let's do that. Brother Price, why don't you come pray for us? Our Father in heaven, it's once again this day we come to thee in the precious name of Jesus. On behalf of our military personnel, Lord, we pray again for a shield of protection about them. Yes. Wherever they may be, I pray that you'll just help them, Lord, and comfort them and strengthen them and guide them in this time. Help them to know that there's some folks back home praying for them, thinking about them. And Lord, I just pray you'll reach to where they are. Certainly thank you for this country, the wonderful freedom yes. that we have. Yes. Thank you for this church, this church family. Thank you for our guests that are visiting yes. with us tonight. Please continue to bless this service now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're next. All right. Be seated. Psalm 38, very quickly with me please, Psalm 38. Thank you, Parrish, for being with us. Good to have you. And uh, when they come, we have short sermons and long songs. <laughs> so get, here we go. All right. They're going to be singing tonight. And as they sing, that's the theme of what we're, uh, the men I've asked to help me tonight about songs throughout the Bible. And I'm the one who's going to start. In Job 38, we have the story of Job. In the first few chapters of Job, you hear, you hear from Job's complaint. You hear from Job's wife. You hear from Job's friend. But it's not until chapter 38 to hear from God. In chapter 38, verse number 1, God spoke to Job out of a whirlwind. It's not unusual for God to speak to people in an unusual way. And God spoke to Job out of a whirlwind. What God did to Job, he didn't answer Job's question about his misery or his sorrow. He said, Job, I want you to consider the heavens. I want you to consider the snow. I want you to consider everything. He said, Job, if you think I'm doing a bad job running this universe, you ought to try to step in and do it. He said, Job, I want you to give me an answer. Where were you when I did all these things? God never answered, answered his questions, but God told him who he was. And the Bible says in Job chapter number 38, that the sons of God sang, look at verse number 7 with me, when the morning stars sang together, and the sons of God shouted for joy. And I want to speak just for a very few minutes, I mean like three or four minutes, on when the morning, the first time that song ever mentioned in the Bible, the first time we know of anyone ever sang was for creation story when God laid the foundations of the world. It's not unusual for history when people laid foundations to sing. When Nehemiah, Nehemiah laid the foundations of the, for the walls of Jerusalem, they watched on the top of the walls, met at one place, and they sang and gave praises to God. And all of creation, all the angels of creation, all the sons of God come out when God's laying his foundation, and they begin to sing. Now, what did they sing? I don't know. But I won't tell you what I think they sang. First of all, I think they, they sang of the power of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. I think they sung of the might and the power of God. Look what God's done. And God tells what he's done. God said, I took the rivers and I said, no father, you go this. And I took the clouds and I wrapped them in a swaddling band like you'd wrap a baby up. And God said, I hold the clouds like you hold a baby in your arm. They sang of the power of God. The second thing they sang about is the purpose of God. Because by him are all things made. He made all things. They were made by him. They were made for him. Revelation 4.11. All those things are taking place. They were made by him. They were made for him. And I tell my people and I want to tell you one more time tonight. You're not here by accident. God has a purpose in your life. God has a reason for you being here where you are at the time you're here. And the third thing they sang about, not only the power of God, not only the purpose of God, they sang of the plan of God. How do I know that? Because before the foundations of the world, Jesus Christ and the heart of God had already given himself a sacrifice for your sins and for my sins. And before you ever got here, God loved you. And long when we'll be gone from this world, thank God, he'll still be loving us. And that'll be a song we're singing through all ages. Amen. Tracy.
turn to Psalms chapter 40 if you would. Oh. Okay. Go right ahead. Uh, all the children, you want to do it? Go ahead. All right. The children may be dismissed to go upstairs to play practice. Three years through sixth grade. And two years and under can be dismissed to go downstairs. Three years through sixth grade can be dismissed to go upstairs. Two years and under can be dismissed to go downstairs. <laughs> Psalms chapter 40. I'm going to talk to you this evening about the, re the songs of the redeemed, some of the songs that the redeemed have. And, I, and uh, look in uh, Psalms 40, if you would. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turned aside. In verse 10, I have not hid the thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. I want to tell you about a song that we sing here. It's called uh, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Yeah. We sing here, and I'm so glad that I'm redeemed. Amen. And I'm so glad that in verse 40, verse 2, there it says, I have a song. I have a redemption song. I'm Amen. redeemed. I'm saved. I'm saved by the grace of God. Uh, he brought me out of a horrible pit and miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Ephesians 1, 7, to counteract that verse in the, in the New Testament, is in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of grace. And it's through his blood. And sometimes these Bibles leave out the blood, and we don't leave the blood out here in the King James Bible here. We preach that. And we'll thank the Lord for that. Not only that, but we have a song of a new life that Christ has given us. Verse 3 again. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. He's, he's given me something to sing about. He's given me uh, redemption. He's given me uh, salvation. I have a home in heaven now. And he's given that to me. And uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Not only that, but he's, he's given me a, a, a song of praise, verse 3 again. And he's put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. And the Bible says in Psalms uh, 150, verse 6, it says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If we didn't praise the Lord, the Bible says that the rocks and the mountain would come out and praise him. And we need to praise the Lord and through song and through all those things. And, and, and just thankful for those things that it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, okay? And then, not only that, but he gives us a, a song of a witness. And this is one of the greatest things that he's given us, is we are to be witnesses uh, to the world. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And in verse 10 it says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. In other words, I've told people. I've witnessed. I'm a witness. And it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm done. My, my, sermon, my sermon's about like a big stick of baloney. You can chop it off anywhere and start off and come back again, okay? That's how, that, that's, how, that's how the gospel is. That's how good it is, amen? And also the five B's of preaching is be br brief, brother, be brief, amen? But I just want to tell you a few little things of what the Bible, some songs that are, the song of the blessedness, a song of confidence, a song of praise, a song of peace, a song of protection, and the song of the aged, and the song of the young, a song of mercy, a song of thanksgiving, a song of restoration, uh, a song of protection, a song of deliverance, a song of victory and triumph that we have in Christ. And not only that, but a song of forgiveness, cleansing, and restoration. Amen. I ask you to turn to Job chapter 35 tonight, if you would. Job chapter 35, and I'm going to start reading from verse 10. And the Bible says, But none saith, Where is God, my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? Uh, I want to talk to you tonight about songs of the suffering. Uh, the book of Job, the theme here is, Why do good people suffer? And uh, Job here, we learn in the, uh, chapter 1 that the uh, Bible says he was perfect, upright, and feared God. But he had three friends that come to him one day and said, You must have some sin in your life, and you need to repent. But there was another friend named Elihu, and he came to him and he said, Your problem is, is your focus is on your suffering instead of God. And uh, so our, our focus sometimes is on our suffering and when we should be looking to God. And in verse 10, Elihu says this, he says, Why don't you let God give you a song in the night? In other words, give you comfort in a time of suffering. Uh, again, in uh, uh, Psalms chapter 77, verse 6, we see the phrase again, I call to remembrance. 
uh, uh, my song in the night. In other words, I remember when God comforted me. First thing I want you to realize tonight is that innocent people and good people suffer for God's will and God's purpose. Job was a good man. Jesus Christ was a good man. Uh, but God gives a song to the suffering. Uh, I think about Christ when we think about suffering. I think about how he suffered and died on the cross uh, for the sins of the world. But uh, God took that ultimate uh, act of hate and he turned it into the ultimate act of love. And we still sing, uh, we still sing about that tonight. But also God gives a song. The God song to the suffering has power. Uh, in Acts chapter 16, uh, we have Paul and Silas and they're in uh, Philippi. And uh, Paul has went there and he has cast a demon out of a lady who is a fortune teller. And he sort of hurt the economy there because she made some money for her masters. And uh, in verse 25 it says at midnight, and I'm going to give you a good remedy for sleepless, sleeplessness. It says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately were opened and everyone's hands were loosed. God's song to the suffering has power tonight. And lastly, I want you to see where God's song to the suffering leads to praise. And uh, Wednesday night, Pastor was uh, preaching and he, uh, he was talking about different preachers that have endured uh, heartaches and suffering in their ministry. And uh, it's amazing how many uh, hymns in our songbook were written by people who was in a, uh, a time of suffering. And uh, we sing a song here, and the title is Jesus, 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 uh, Sweetest Name I Know. And uh, that, to me, sounds like somebody that's on an emotional high. But actually, that song was written back in 1910 by a young evangelist. His name was Luther B. Bridger. And he and his wife and his three children had went to his in-laws in Harrodsburg, Kentucky, to spend some time there. And uh, one night we were there, the house caught on fire, and his wife and his three kids perished in that fire. And in those months following that, he experienced God's grace. And God gave him, started speaking to him through songs. And he wrote that song, Jesus, Sweetest Name I Know. And in the fourth verse, he, 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 he starts to write about his personal experience, and he writes these words. He says, Though sometimes it leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. God gives a song to the suffering. God's song to the suffering has power, and his song leads to praise. Thank you.
your neighbors not clapping, you elbow and tell them to get with it. Right, I'm the Lord, and I'm the master's Lord, and I'm the Lord. Find you again. Sing 
My part of the sermon tonight deals with the song of reflection. There's several passages in the Bible that we could turn to, that we could see this wonderful truth displayed, but I've chosen kind of an unusual passage of Scripture in Judges chapter 5. I'll tell you right up front, if you're depressed, Judges is not a good place to read for your devotions. There's no question about it, we're living in a dark time, and certainly this was a dark time for the children of Israel, and it was a dark time in their history. We're living in a dark age, and it seems like darkness abounds everywhere we look. There's just darkness upon darkness. Every direction you and I look, there is darkness there, and it just seems as everything is getting darker as the days go by. But the good news that I want to share with you this evening is this, that no matter how dark the situation is, you and I can shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, what's happening all around us does not have to define us. People are drowning in a sea of hopelessness and it looks like there's no hope whatsoever for them. There's no light at the end of the tunnel and if there is light at the end of the tunnel, it's the light of an oncoming train. But even in the midst of dark times, we can still praise God. We can talk about the song of reflection. Judges is a book that's filled with fear and frustration. It's a book that's filled with judgment and the wrath of God and the discipline of God. One chapter after another chapter, we see that depicted for us. Disappointment and anguish abounds in the book of Judges. But in the midst of all of that, God was able to raise up judges that would deliver his people. And in Judges chapter 5, we find that they have just experienced a complete victory over Jabin, the king of Canaan, and we're told how it was celebrated. Judges chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. They expressed their joy and thankfulness in song. The Bible says, Then sang Debron Barak, the son of Abinoham, on that day, saying, Praise the Lord for avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. You know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it true that the right combination of words and melody, they seem to very seldom ever, ever fail and work their magic. So here they are now, the children of Israel just experienced great victory, and they're singing this song of reflection. They were able to look back and see what God had done for them, and they were able to sing about the wonderful victory God gave them. Now, I could stand here this evening, and I could sing the song of reflection, how God has blessed my life. I could stand here this evening and sing the song of reflection, how God has blessed many of you here. But what I'd like to do just for a few moments, I would like to sing the song of reflection on how God has blessed Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Now, I only have just a few moments, so I have to be very selective. But did you realize back in 1895, a group of people actually uh, left Mount Pisgah and they organized another church called Altar Grove. A man by the name of Charlie Stonecipher donated some land. That's the land that this church presently sits on at this time. And after a period of time, Mount Pisgah and Altar Grove came back together in 1925, and they became known as Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Been that way ever since. In 1950, due to biblical reasons, Mount Pisgah became an independent Baptist church. And it stood firm on the Word of God, the infallibly, infallibly, infallibility and inerrant Word of God. God has been good to this church. 
You can walk out in the foyer and you can see pictures of the buildings where, uh, that, have, uh, we, that this church has occupied up into this present structure today. And we have plans for 1,100 seat auditorium. God has been good to this church. I wonder if when this church was organized, I wonder if they ever dreamed that one day we'd have a ministry that would reach around the world. God has been good to this church. I wonder if those folks back in the early days ever dreamed that we'd have a church that has approximately 20 different ministries. God has been good to this church. I wonder if those folks ever dreamed of having a print shop that would print the Bible in some 16 different languages. God has been good to this church. I wonder if those folks ever dreamed that one day we'd have a daycare and a Christian school where we could teach our boys and girls reading and writing and arithmetic and social studies and science but we could also teach them the word of God without fear. God has been good to this church. I wonder if those folks back in the early days ever dreamed that we would support some 200 missionaries on a monthly basis. God has been good to this church. I wonder if those folks from years gone by ever dreamed that we'd see people saved on a daily basis. God has been good to this church. But beloved, we need to sing the song of reflection. But I also want to say to you tonight, and I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, we don't need to live in the past. There are great things still ahead for us. When you go out into your car, if you're parked in a parking lot and you get in your car, the first thing that you do when you back out is you check that rear view mirror in the center of the automobile to make sure there's nothing behind you. That rear view mirror will show you what is behind you. Now you need the rear view mirror in your car to see what is behind you to occasionally glance at. But when you go forward, ladies and gentlemen, please don't spend too much time in the rear view mirror because making your way forward, if you spend too much time in the rear view mirror, you're gonna, you're gonna hurt somebody the rear view mirror is critical to glance at. It's devastating to live in. Amen. Now, I want to close with this. In front of that rear view mirror, there's a much larger piece of glass. It's called the what? Windshield. The windshield. You know why? Because where you're going is more important than where you've been. Great things lie ahead for this church and for the people of this church. And may God help us as we press forward. Finally tonight, we're going to talk about the song of the saints in heaven. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy. We started with creation, and we're going to end in heaven. The song of the saints, the first thing that we hear them say, Thou art worthy. Tonight, my friend, Jesus Christ is worthy of all His praise and glory that He gets. He's worthy, first of all, because He was slain. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no freedom, no pardon, no forgiveness, no liberty. Tonight, my friend, Jesus Christ is worthy because he died on an old rugged cross for you and for me. He is worthy because he redeemed us. He bought us back. He bought us back to himself. He bought us back by the blood, the currency for which he purchased us. Tonight, my friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will not be able to sing the song of the saints in heaven. You will not be able to sing for eternity, thou art worthy. No you'll spend eternity in a place called hell. My friend, tonight I want you to know that you can be saved. He is worthy for you to be saved. He is worthy for you to come to Him tonight. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please won't you make the trip to the altar tonight? Won't you ask Him to come into your heart? Won't you ask Him to be your Savior? Because my friend, He is worthy. But not only do we say, see the song that they sang was about His worthiness, but they also song, uh, they sang a song about His works. Revelation chapter 15 and verse 3, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Tonight we see the song of the saints in heaven. They sing about his works. Notice his works are great. They are wondered at. They are enlarged. But they're also marvelous. It's big, exceedingly great, high, large, loud, mighty, sore. Moses' song, they sang with the deliverance of Egypt 
Egypt. They sang about the deliverance of the Red Sea. Tonight, Egypt represents the world. My friend, because Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for my sins and for your sins, you can be freed from the sins of this world. You can be freed from the bondage of sin. I'm so thankful that Christ has freed us from the liberty and we are free from sin. But not only are we freed from sin, but we're freed and God will deliver us through the hardships and the trials, the Red Seas of our life. And then finally tonight, I see that they sang a song of his ways. Revelations 15, 3 again, it says, and they sang a great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. His ways, my friend, are just. We may not know why things happen today. We may not know why things happened to us in the past. But know this, that God's ways are just. They're innocent. They're holy. They're righteous. And God's ways are true. They're non-concealing. We may not understand them, but we must realize that His ways are just and true. Bow our heads for a moment, close our eyes. Tracy, y'all have an invitational song you can sing for us. I don't think you ever heard of a church service without giving an invitation. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ, we're not through singing yet. We're going to sing some more. We've got some other things we're going to do. If you don't know Christ, you ought to get saved tonight. You ought to come to know Him. He loves you. If you've not been serving Him, you ought to serve Him tonight. You ought to do those things. Someone would be glad to help you here. If there's something you need to talk with God about, need to pray with someone, someone to pray with you, we'd be glad to help you do that tonight. We extend you an invitation to come to know the Lord of glory. If you do not know him, he loves you, cares for you. You're not here by accident. He wants to save you. You need to rededicate your life. You need to pray. I want you to come. They'll sing a verse for us. You need to come. You come as they sing. You come. Yes. Just to take him at his word. Won't you quietly stand with me, please? If you need to come, you keep on coming while you're standing. You need to come, you come. Let's sing it together. While our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed for a moment. If you've been saved somewhere else, but you've never made it public at a church service, what Christ has done for you, can I get you to make that public tonight? If you're here tonight and you need to get baptized tonight or set a time to get baptized, I want you to come. Or tonight, this is the church family. You'll be a part of this church family. Something you've prayed about. You need to do that tonight. I want you to come. They'll sing one more verse for us. If you need to come and do that, you come now. Come now. They'll sing one more verse. You need to come, you come. <laughs> Amen.
Yes. Yes. You be seated, please. Tracy. Hey. I want to thank y'all. Thank you. For coming and singing for us. Thank you for having us. Y'all made our for, way. For working with us. And we could have a church service and some good singing, too. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. You. You, you sang a... Yes, that's fine. You sang a song the last time you were here, and I can't think of it, but it was so good. I mean, I'm not saying... I'm just saying it was... What was it? You, that's it. That's it. We don't do that. No, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Well, now, the bad thing about it is I've got to get ready to baptize. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but I want to hear it. All right. Sing about it. Sing, sing a song. You want to sing a few? Right. Yeah, sing yeah, again. What about that one she sang for you? Go, uh, you was winging your way somewhere. What was that one you did? That one? High. What was that one where it goes real high and you was...
Nathan left you. He and his twin, his twin brother, got saved last week. Talked to their parents about getting baptized. Let's have their families going to watch them get baptized tonight. They're here. They come to our church. Let's have those watch came here to watch them get baptized. Stand up tonight for me for a second. All right. A bunch of these folks here came. And, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's good. All right, Doug. Hey, I want you to know I'm proud of you. I want you to know Jesus loves you. I want your life to count for you. Nathan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Bear the Christ in baptism, risen and walk in of life. Bless your heart, son. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. This is Noah. Is that right, Noah? Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you got saved, buddy. And I'm glad you're following the Lord in baptism. I want to tell you, I love you. I want your life to count for God. And Noah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism. Rinse the law, get us alive. God bless you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, have some singing. You haven't sang my song yet.
Is that all right? Okay. Someone's going to answer for it. You're going to make sure Calvary does. We appreciate you folks coming. I'm glad the gospel is free, aren't you? But the pipeline cost. How about giving a good offering for these folks tonight when you leave? And let's, let's be a blessing to them as they've been a blessing to us. I want you to do that for us. Uh, let's see. I don't hardly ever do this. Those boys weren't here yet, are they? They'll be out in just a minute. We want to shake hands with them tonight. Can we maybe take one request? You got, I know you got one more song in you, don't you? Okay, how about that one, if you don't mind? Come on, yeah. These guys are already going outside to smoke. They're having to come back in. <laughs> No, they don't. They don't. Oh, oh, okay. They, they chew. Oh, they chew. <laughs> Maybe there's dipping. I'm not sure.
Well, let's go out there where you can smoke. And... <laughs> All right. Uh, where are you, Brother Price? Brent, take your boys back there. Brother Price will show you where to stand. We're going to shake hands with you. Leave some of the families. Yes, uh, this side. It'll be fine. Some of the family can stand with them. I want you to shake hands with them as you leave tonight. And uh, it's a wonderful thing they've done. Amen. Amen. We're going to do that. All right, Brother Price will be back. Any of the family wants to stand with them may do so. Nathan, is the teens meeting after church still? We still have a teen meeting after church, and I have a meeting with the deacons when church is over, so don't forget that, please. All right, let's stand to our feet. Tell five people you love them, and you can leave. Thank you, Juanita.